sometimes you'll hear a claim that there's randomized controlled trial evidence showing that feeding vegetable oils increased risk of cancer mortality and usually people are referring to this LA veteran study which did find a significant reduction in cardiovascular events in the group that were randomized to consumption of vegetable oils but there was this kind of sub-analysis done looking at risk of cancer death and there was this non-significant increase in risk of cancer death in those assigned to the vegetable oil consumption group and a lot is made out of that but but almost always those that are kind of referring to that are not providing all of the details and one of the details that people overlook is that this this was a great study from the 1960s randomized controlled trial in that to measure adherence they actually looked at the serum levels of linoleic acid so you could see who you know it was it was kind of ahead of its time and one of the the neat things is like in the experimental group given vegetable oils they were able to see who were the subjects that adhered to the dietary protocol high linoleic acid vegetable oil versus those that didn't and when they went back and looked at this slight increase in cancer that was non-significant it was actually driven by the people that did not adhere to the really? intervention. I didn't know that. <laughs> and so in this paper, and I'll put this on screen for people to read, this is from the primary author of the paper. They said, many of the cancer deaths in the experimental group were among those who did not adhere closely to the diet. This reduces the possibility that feeding of polyunsaturated oils was responsible for excess carcinoma mortality observed in the experimental group. And so... You'll often see people point to this and say, this is gold standard randomized controlled trial data. You know, seed oils are increasing your risk of cancer. Uh, it's not until you dig into that study a little bit and look at who actually developed cancer, look at the adherence that it, you see that that logic kind of breaks down a bit. And then back to what Bill was talking about earlier, we have observational data, biomarker data that looks at tissue levels of it linoleic acid and cancer mortality and you see across these populations high levels of linoleic acid is associated with lower risk of cancer mortality so at this point i think it's a that's another position that you know seed oils increased risk of cancer is a, it's a difficult position to to take yeah that's great I, I had not realized that 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 the they had what you just said that that's really interesting so looking forward bill where do you think the the missing gaps are, I, I think you mentioned earlier, you said, I, I don't think there's there's going to be any data that changes the mind of these individuals out there. Is there is there gaps in this research? Is there any type of study or question that you think should be asked that, that might help give people a little more confidence here? Well, if we, yeah, I think if we take the, the position of reality, we're not going to see a randomized trial of 10, 20, 30,000 people to five, six, seven, ten years of consuming one low linoleic acid versus high linoleic acid. It's, it's just, it ain't going to happen. Nobody's going to fund that. Um, and so we're going to have to just put up with what we have for non-randomized trial studies. And so we, we're looking at observational data. Um, so we are currently as part of this uh, coalition group that we've, we've called the FORCE, FORCE group. We've looked at many, uh, pooled the data from many, many different observational studies together. Um, and we're doing one right now on, again, blood levels or tissue levels of omega-6 and total mortality and cancer mortality, cardiovascular uh, and that study is going to show the same thing as our study in the in the UK Biobank showed uh, from the data I've seen so far. It's going to corroborate that completely. Um, so to the extent that anybody's going to believe that biomarker-based, um, and when we say biomarker-based, I mean blood, blood linoleic acid levels, the higher they are, the better cardiovascular, cancer, other causes of death. Um, that's, I, I, th I think, the kind of thing we can keep doing. Um, whether that is going to convince anybody when they've got their metabolic chart to gaze upon and they've uh, got their in vitro or their animal study experiment that they want to... It's almost like a religion. I don't know why the 
uh, where it comes from, where this energy comes from um, against these oils. I just don't get it. Right, and it's a it's a valuing of of mechanisms uh, over the over the outcome data, and I think I think ultimately that you know I think what you'll publish if it corroborates the current biomarker research out there, I think it's uh, it's going to be you know have a positive impact in some way. But I think these people that have these this kind of deep conviction about seed oils are likely just to come back and say healthy user bias again. We should just focus on the the biochemistry and the mechanisms. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the worst thing I saw part of in in the video you sent me from Paul was he referred to a study that I was part of, which one of these these collaboration meta analysis of multiple biomarker studies where we we found it. And Jason Wu was the first author, and we found that higher levels of linoleic acid were associated with lower risk for developing type two diabetes over time. And all he had to say about it was one of the authors, he said the study was funded by the seed oil industry, which is absolutely not true. It wasn't funded by anybody. One of the authors had consulted for Bungie, one of the seed oil companies, and he highlighted that author and that thing. And he said, therefore, don't believe anything this says. And that is just completely disingenuous. It, it presumes that People, science are, are are lying to make money, and it's just not true. It's just not. I mean, there's 50 authors on this paper. One of them has this, you know, consulted for this company once. It doesn't mean he's biased for them. It doesn't mean the entire paper is. But that's the kind of that's as far as the, that's as good as they can do to criticize these papers is to find this kind of thing. It really aggravated me, frankly. Do you think that the demonization of of seed oils uh, and I guess some of the changes that the government are are beginning to make will have a damaging effect on public health? Yes, yeah. I, I think if if the the current I mean, who knows what's going to happen with RFK and the here in the United States Secretary of Health, who's kind of against seed oils, um. I'd love to get his ear and I'd love to have him listen to this podcast, but you know, who knows? Um, I, I would, it would, if they follow through on their plans and do what steak and shake is doing and in a thousand different places, they start removing vegetable oils from our food supply and going back to animal fats. We're simply going to increase our risk for cardiovascular events, cardiovascular disease. There's no question about it. If it's not seed oils, if they're not the the culprit for a decline in in public health, an increase in these chronic diseases, what what's wrong with the the current U.S. diet? What where should governments focus? Well, I th- calories is a good part of it. Simply the amount of energy people are eating. People are getting fat. Not because of seed oils. They're getting fat because they're eating too much food and they are not exercising enough. I mean, it, that just seems like this is so simple. Um, that's the problem. So that's that statement, because I agree with the sentiment of your statement. And I think what we're seeing is, you know, within this kind of what I would describe as a, a pseudoscience wellness space, there is a weaponization of kind of what you just stated there because i agree i think it's a it's a calorie problem there's a sedentary lifestyle problem and the people within this wellness community they're telling the population that what you're just saying there is you're blaming the individual but i know you're not i know that what you're saying is at least what i from our discussions previously and feel free to to clarify your position here is that we live in an environment that's making it very difficult to be healthy. So the easy, affordable choice, convenient choice is a hyper palatable, energy dense, it's delicious, right? And 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 we're driven to seek out these kind of foods that re- give us a, a reward because, hey, back in the day, we didn't know when the next famine was coming. The problem is we're never going into famine 
So we're constantly surrounded by an abundance of these these affordable calorie dense foods that we can deliver to our door. We don't have to exercise and move to get them. We the way we work is much more sedentary. Um, so it's not it's not a, a position of hey all of the individuals out there are to blame. No, no, no. Right, you're right. It's 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 in the it's in the water we're swimming in. We we you can't we can almost not help it. Uh, it's tasty food that's cheap. I mean, how you that's what RFK is going to have run up against. How is he going to how is he going to turn that ship around? Well, that's a more complex problem to kind of unravel, which is back to why I think people like to to demonize something like seed oils. Is it, it simplifies a very complex, multifaceted problem. And that provides some intellectual ease or comfort. Satisfaction that you're right, right. Just, you feel like you're right. I know what you're saying, and I agree. When it comes to gut health, fiber is absolutely foundational, but not all fiber is created equal. That's why I teamed up with Dr. Will Bolsowitz to create DMN, Daily Microbiome Nutrition from 38 Terra. DMN is a next level complete prebiotic blend designed to nourish your gut with ingredients that are clean, clinically backed, and precisely dosed based on human clinical trials. Alongside five other prebiotics, we included Actazin, a green kiwi fruit powder that has been shown to support regularity and reduce occasional constipation, and Solnol, a resistant potato starch proven to increase key gut bacteria like Bifidobacterium and Akkermansia, while also improving stool consistency and digestive comfort. No fillers, no fluff, just high quality science-backed prebiotics in one easy scoop Per day. If you're looking for a simple, effective way to support your gut health alongside a healthy diet, this is it. And for the months of April and May, you can get 25% off your first DMN subscription with the code PROOF at checkout. An exclusive offer for the PROOF community, bigger than any other offer you will see out there. Head to 38terra.com, that's 38tera.com, and use the code PROOF. Glorious poops and a happy gut are just around the corner.